This is Crystal Hubbard, and I'm reporting here for That'sMyEntertainment.com. Okay. Hi. Hi. How's it going? I'm very good. So we're here with Jody Silly, and just briefly, if you can let us know what you're involved in now. I know you're involved with several of the schools in the area, and then you have started some of your own projects. You can give us a brief rundown of what you're currently working on. Okay. Well, I teach uh, video production at UCSD, at Platt College, at the Media Arts Center San Diego, um, production as well as editing, and I've done teaching, I've taught for about going on nine years now at various ages, so I've taught high school kids, college kids, um, older adults in workshop type of scenarios. I'm also working on quite a few of my own projects, some of the things that I'd like to see happen in San Diego, just as a filmmaker here in San Diego. And the most, kind of the biggest one is the San Diego Student and Independent Film Foundation. It's a new organization that we're forming here in San Diego to help fund and mentor local student and up and coming talent and independent filmmakers, um, as well as provide job resources and educational resources and in the future, you know, exhibition opportunities like screenings of films. I actually run the San Diego Student Film Festival um, out of that organization as well. Okay. What kind of spurred this on? I know as a teacher you maybe watched your students struggle once they graduated, seen all of that for them. Yeah, I mean I have a lot of, I put a lot of time and energy and passion into teaching. It's one of my favorite things to do and I've, you know, over the course of the years it really developed that. And I guess what I kept seeing over and over again was my students graduate from college, go out into the workforce with all this talent and all this passion and all this excitement and then just find that in San Diego there was really no work for them. You know, this is before the recession even, you know, this is before, during, and after the recession, that there really wasn't anything for them to go and do. So I've got this entire student group of students that I've worked with who have this incredible talent who then are now working in like low wage jobs, they're working at corporations as, you know, cashiers, they're working in unrelated fields, maybe they still have the same job they had when they went to school. And that to me seemed like a huge waste of talent. Um, not only that, you know, it's hard for me to spend all this time on these students and then just watch them not be able to utilize any of the skills. And as we know, with filmmaking and technology, you gotta move with it. You'll get left behind if you don't stay caught up. So it's one of those skills that really you need to grow and continue and constantly work on to get better at, or you know, by the time you come back to it, it's an entirely different game. Right. It, it kind of sounds like between the foundation and everything you already had as a resource, you're kind of trying to connect the dots yeah, for this okay. community. What's interesting is my feet are in a lot of doors in San Diego. You know, I'm a filmmaker, so I work with a lot of filmmakers. Um, I'm a teacher, so I am, have my feet in a lot of the doors of schools here. I take classes here, so I'm in other schools, you know, in a, as a student. Um, as well as I have a, an extensive nonprofit background, and an MBA from San Diego State, so a lot of the resources that I have come from that background and my educational background. So, yeah, it, in a lot of ways it connected the dots in my own life. Like, I'm like, oh wow, this is exactly what I should be doing because it connects all the things that I'm good at and all the things that I've learned and all the skills that I've developed over the years into one particular focused effort. Mm -hmm. and with those reasons, you keep mentioning it's, it's San Diego. Of course, we're based in San Diego, and, and you've decided to kind of set up camp for not only yourself, but for all of this yeah. in San Diego. What What's the benefit for having it in San Diego as opposed to maybe moving to closer to Los Angeles? Well, what's there's a lot of things that are beautiful about San Diego besides it being a beautiful place to live and that people want to be here. Right. Um, it's kind of a perfect storm right now. It's not necessarily that it's San Diego or any other place, it's just that now's the time to do what we're trying to do because of a variety of factors. San Diego just happens to have more positives in its, you know, more, more benefits to it than other cities because we're near L LA, we're close to LA, so we have a lot of the opportunities that LA has, but we're not LA, so we actually can draw a lot of attention to us. Um, it really is about a perfect storm. You've got, historically, a shift in the way that video is produced. You've got a decentralization of 
resources out of LA. You've got production moving out of LA, which provide which creates a great opportunity for any city or anyone to draw attention to itself and to build some sort of film industry. Um, on top of that, you've got all this incredible talent here. That's a lot of it's kind of came out here, maybe in hopes of going to Los Angeles, Los Angeles and you know really dealt with the cold, hard facts of living in that city and ended up in San Diego. So I feel like in San Diego we have kind of an overflow of talent more than most cities. And I think what, I mean, there's a dozen other reasons why now is a perfect time, but those are kind of the main ones. And San Diego's a perfect place because of all those reasons. You know, we have beautiful locations. We have a perfect weather year round. Yep. If Santa Fe, New Mexico can have a film industry, San, San Diego, Diego has no excuse. I mean, yeah. we have everything times 10 of a place like Santa Fe, New Mexico, or even Austin, Texas, you know? So there's, it's not really a matter of why. To me, it's like, why not? There's nothing here that's going to prohibit something like that. So if anything, there's a huge amount of reasons why it should already exist. And since it doesn't, you know, a lot of reasons why it will be very, in my opinion, easy to do. I mean, it's going to take a lot of work, but all the factors are here. There's nothing stopping it. Right. There's no, I have yet to have someone come up to me and say, you know, here's why it doesn't exist in San Diego. And this is something we can't get past. Right. We're not hearing, this can't work here. We yeah. keep hearing. Okay. Absolutely. So since you started organizing this, this foundation, um, what are some of the ways that you have tried to channel it to start and make more people in the area aware of it? Well, one of the things that we wanted to do over the long run was we want to fund films. And we want to provide mentorship opportunities for young filmmakers because it's a skill that needs to be developed and having a support system and sort of a apprenticeship type of program would really help you know increase the quality of some of the productions coming out of here. Part of that was sort of determining what the talent pool was that we had here and figuring out what people are here in San Diego that we would go to as mentors or go to to fund films. Um, since there was no centralized location or centralized, I guess, place for filmmakers um, or to find filmmakers, we decided, well, you know, let's have an event and so start pulling together the talent pool that's here in San Diego. You know, we can grow it over the course of the next year and then in about a year when we actually have some funding and we're able to do something with that money, we'll actually know where the talent pool is, we'll know what type of actors we have, what type of directors are doing work, um, what type of projects are being, you know, pulled off in San Diego. We just sort of have a central place to go. And part of that was the San Diego Independent Filmmakers Consortium. That was what we were considered our talent pool. Um, fortunately, <laughs> it, w it went well. Yes. Uh, we had one event to, well, we knew it would go well, and we knew that this is a need here in San Diego. It's obvious, I see it every day in my, in my work. Um, but we kind of expected it to grow over the course of the year, not to kind of explode into in what has become a tremendous opportunity and a tremendous outpouring of support in less than a month and a half. Right. Having, I think we had 280 people at our first event, almost 500 people at our second event, and just the amount of just word of mouth, buzz, excitement, um, support that's come out, all the so many people come out to try and sponsor. I mean, I can't even keep up with the emails, to be honest. Um, we've added about six staff members, and I'm, well, I take that back. We've added, we have about six staff members that are working sort of a, on a volunteer basis, and another 25 volunteers that are handling different sides of this because it's gotten so big right. that we branched out to pull in more help, and so many people are just giving their time, their energy, their money, their resources to help make this happen. Okay. So where do you see it going? Maybe just the next few months. Do you have any other plans now that you've got this foundation? Yeah. Well, in the next few months, our next event is in January, okay. January 25th. And we have some pretty big plans for it. And a lot of, we're looking at it, the growth of it's been great. And, but our real focus is funding and funding projects. And our January event is gonna be more of a convention style okay. event. Um, it's gonna have the same attributes of our previous events. We're gonna have a pitch fest, we're gonna have a networking mixer, we're gonna screen locally made movies, shorts, music videos, trailers, animations, documentaries. Um, but then we're gonna add a component where we bring in resources for actors and directors, such as casting agents, um, 
headshot photographers, real editors, uh, local film schools, local acting coaches, things like that, to sort of provide the support for that group of um, filmmakers and casting crew here in San Diego um, to, you know, just provide what they need to kind of get better and to increase their skills. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're just trying to adapt to this response that you've got yeah. as quickly as possible. Yes. I'm pretty much trying to stay one, half of, one step ahead of the crowd. Right. They can stay one step ahead of the crowd, like, we're fine. And, and we have the resources, I mean. There's lots of people out there absolutely willing to get involved. Yeah. So That's many it. people want to help, and so many people, there, there's all the infrastructure here mm -hmm. to grow something. Right. And all we're doing is connecting the dots. The dots were already there. And there may be new things that come out of it, but all we're trying to do is pull them into one place. And that's, I think, Networking. we've been incredibly effective at doing is yeah. connecting in all the resources in San Diego that will help bring this forward and then utilizing and connecting and building from there. Okay. So, dream scenario. Where would, how would you see this um, paying off in mm. five years from now? What would, you, what would be different about San Diego that is the ultimate outcome? Well, I mean, when I initially started, uh, this, this can go on for a minute, but the long-term plan on this is actually pretty well developed. Before we even started the consortium, the plan was, in, was already being developed to fund large-scale productions out of San Diego. Not to necessarily attract productions here that are already being created in like Hollywood or other places, although that's a piece of it. Mm -hmm. The main goal is to fund projects and attract investor money to San Diego to fund TV shows, films, and you know, feature animations, whatever comes up as sort of something that has mass appeal. Okay. That's the long-term sort of big picture. It's not so much, let's just all make short films and like get better at this. It's once we see who the best people are, at that point, I'm, I've actually already formed the organization. We're, we're uh, another organization that is formed will seek investor funds, so venture capital funds, to invest in some of the best and most talented producers and projects coming out of San Diego. Okay, so really a, a chance for the talent that has started here to just seed their dreams. Yeah, fulfilled. Yeah, in, in a big way, like have money come in to fund things happening here. Yep. Um, it's a common, it's a common thing with venture capital. It's locate, it's location based and it's industry based. So given that we're in a scenario where, as independent filmmakers, we can make highly competitive products, um, then once we some sort of uh, come up with some distribution channels and have access to more financing, then it's really only a matter of time and sort of ability to be able to pull off something much larger scale. So that's a big picture. I mean, ideally to me, I just want San Diego to be an amazing place to live for someone who's a filmmaker. I want my students to at least have the opportunity to get a job here in San Diego when they graduate from school. Going to LA is no longer an option necessarily. I mean, you have the decentralization of the industry means there's less and less jobs up there, and the amount of competition for the jobs that there are is incredible. Right. So even just to, to compete compete in that world, you need some sort of development which needs to happen here. Okay. You know, so I want it to be a great place. I want to for people to go to school, to graduate from school, and to have some sort of network and community to come into. And I think we've already created yes. that. But what that is missing is money. So linking the investors to something that will become a wonderful product. Yeah. Well, uh, wonderful is a strong word. Um, watch some TV shows on like some of the other channels. It's not so much about wonderful, it's about mass appeal. Right. It, it's not so much that you're looking for the best product, but it, but the product that's going to sell. The payoff. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I would love to, I mean, ideally in a perfect world, this would be like French New Wave and you'd get like amazingly talented, out of the box, you know, anti-establishment type of stuff. But that's not the only goal. Okay. You know, it, I, we want it to be creative. We want to kind of bring it back to the story and the art. But 
to me, it's more about having a sustainable film economy here. Yes. That's it. That's really it. If that means making reality shows, you know, I'm not gonna. It'll fund the other projects. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's it's all of that. Yeah. You know, do I do I want it to just be amazing art? Yes. Yeah. But. That's the reality of it. The reality so of the industry is different, and I do think what I, just like we found here in San Diego that there is this huge need for this. I feel like there's a huge unmet need for real storytelling in film, because all those people that go to the movies and walk out and just wish they had never wasted two and a half hours of their life want something, substantial. you know, substantial, something that is real and that tells a strong story. And if we can tap into that, then I feel like that's a completely un unmet unmet market need um, and I even see a lot of things online well I won't, I won't go into all that but there's certainly it's obvious it's yes. obvious when people walk out of movies and, and it's obvious when you're recreat when you're the movie coming out is the tenth you know in a series of tenth in a, yeah industry. I mean it's a franchise it's not it's set up to make money it's not set up to tell stories right. and I think there's that that need for people to, that's why we connect with cinema, yes. because of the story. Not because of the $8 billion you spent on CG, but because of the story. And that's sort of lost in the current, you know, uh, current box office yeah. releases. I think a, a network like this could definitely be a good way to start a new pattern yeah. in cities like this. So I'm hoping that um, maybe in five years you'll watch this interview and go, ha ha. I was right. <laughs> I was right. It's moving a lot. I will say it's moving about ten times faster than we originally this is good. planned. Our timelines were moving up real quick. We're like, oh well, in three to five years, and I'm already at the well. Let's put that at one to two years, you know, because it, again, it's just organization. It's not like it's organization, it's infrastructure, and to tell strong stories, you don't necessarily need massive CGI components, right? It can be very simple, so it doesn't need to be really high level, extremely expensive productions. That's what got Hollywood in trouble. Yes. They, they've set up the scenario that it costs so much to make these movies that they need to make so much back to even break even. Right. So how do you do that? Well, you create stuff you know people are going to come out and see and mass people. You're not going for the niche. You're not going for people who want to, you know, see a strong story. You're going for people who are just, okay, Transformers 7, all right, let's do it, you know? And the beauty of that system is they've got massive infrastructure and distribution channels completely locked down. So, you know, it's working for them, but for us, we don't necessarily have to have that. Right. If we can make a feature-length movie on $50,000, we don't have to make $8 million to make a profit. Yes. We, we have to make you know, a hundred thousand dollars to make a profit, or you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. there's a lot lower of a expectation for return, right? So that the expectations of what a movie should be yeah. can change. Yeah, with this being much more available to yes. the average filmmaker. Yes, uh, I can definitely see the payoff for that. And yeah. I want to wish you all the luck, and I'll be keeping a close eye. <laughs> Thank you, Jody. I want to thank Jody for her time today. And this was Crystal Hubbard reporting for That's My Entertainment.com, and I'll see you all there.